Good afternoon and welcome to the April 1st, 2024 meeting of the Orlando City Council. We're going to begin today's proceedings with the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Sheehan today. Thank you, Mayor Dyer. And um, I quit drinking 11 years ago last week and I find solace in something called the Serenity Prayer. It's very short, but it's very meaningful. So join me if you can. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, your God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Okay, let's call the meeting to order. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll and make a determination of a quorum, please? Commissioner Gray? Here. Commissioner Ortiz? Here. Commissioner Stewart? Here. Commissioner Sheehan? Here. Commissioner Burns? Here. Mayor Dyer? Here. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. First order of business is consideration of minutes from the workshop agenda second, review second. and city council meeting of March 11th. Uh, motion by Commissioner Ortiz, second by Commissioner Stewart, all in favor, indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, and so the motion carries. Okay, let's move right into the mayor's update, and I have one very important thing. I'm always proud of how the city empowers members of our team to learn and grow and take on leadership roles. And every year, uh, the mayor's leadership award recognizes leaders like this and acknowledges them for their contribution so our human resource director Anna Palenzuela <laughs> you can great. finally say that right it did um, will provide an overview of the award and this year's award recipient good afternoon mayor commissioners and invited guests the mayor's leadership award was established in 2005 and is designed to recognize employees who have demonstrated exemplary leadership by upholding the highest ethics leading in a collaborative manner and enhancing and supporting the City of Orlando's mission statement. It is my honor to officially announce the recipient of the 2023 Mayor Leadership Award, and it is Elizabeth Dane, Planning Division Manager. <laughs> now it's time to celebrate Elizabeth who has demonstrated remarkable examples of leadership and is so deserving of this recognition. Turning it over to Brooke Bonnet, EDV Director, who will introduce Elizabeth. Look how much press turned out for you, Elizabeth. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Our county friends, too. We have everybody. That's good. Good afternoon, Mayor, Commissioners, and welcome to all of our colleagues um, who have joined us today to celebrate Elizabeth. Elizabeth graduated um, from Bryn Mawr College with her undergraduate degree in economics and went on to earn a master's degree in city planning from the University of Maryland. She began her career with the city of Orlando in 2004 as a planner too. And as she has shared, she um, had her first interview with Kevin Tyeski, um, and she knew this is where she wanted to begin her career. Um, and I know Kevin is smiling down on all of us today as we celebrate Elizabeth. While his life was cut much too short, um, his legacy lives on through many of the team members that he hired, um, including Elizabeth. Elizabeth was recognized very early on in her career as an exemplary team member and quickly advanced through the ranks since first being employed by the city in 2004, um, almost celebrating her 20 year anniversary this summer. Um, in 2007, just three years after she joined the city team, Elizabeth was awarded the Dennis McNamara Employee of the Year Award. Um, and under her leadership, the City Planning Division has been the recipient of numerous awards, most recently the prestigious Addison Meisner Award. Um, this award celebrates achievements of excellence in many categories, including urbanism. Elizabeth will accept this award for the City Planning Division, um, Division's work over many years um, supporting the development of Baldwin Park as a new urbanist community. 
Over her almost 20 years of leadership, she's demonstrated the ability to make decisions that have led to long-term positive benefits, not only for this organization, but for the community as a whole. Her low-key but confident style is her trademark. Even the most demanding and difficult situations, and there have been many, um, she and she's always on the hot seat at city council meetings too, <laughs> this day included. Um, she displays her characteristic calm and grace. Due to her knowledge, leadership skills, and her get it done manner, she spearheaded innovative, innovative policy changes and is looked to as a key player on numerous initiatives that, uh, that cross multiple city departments. Just one of many has been her efforts to increase the affordable housing supply. She's been intimately involved in shaping various housing projects um, to create positive housing solutions to advance our affordable housing goals. Similarly, she's played a key role in developing new um, policies to protect wetlands and to advance our environmental and our sustainability efforts. Elizabeth understands the importance of collaborating with other city departments, with the development community, and with outside agencies. Elizabeth is, understands that a good leader is one that appreciates the importance of collaboration, and I can't stress that enough, and exudes the, princ the principles of collaboration in their everyday. She works tirelessly each day to forge relationships that ultimately bring about collaboration and in turn produce better projects. She is a facilitator and a mentor, and her keen understanding of the importance of displaying collaborative efforts is just one of the many attributes that make her an exceptional leader who is valued by this city, by her coworkers, by the entire community and development community also and our partner agencies um, elizabeth is exemplary in every way and extremely deserving of this award so thank you for recognizing her i'm shaking and i'm not even the one. I forgot to recognize Elizabeth's husband, who's with her today, Anqua. <laughs> Okay, um, subsequent to the agenda review meeting, we have been notified that Governor DeSantis entered an executive order under state law temporarily suspending Commissioner Hill from office due to criminal charges that have been brought against her. 
As a city, our focus is ensuring the residents of District 5 are appropriately served and represented. We are currently working with the Supervisor of Elections and hope to be able to hold a special election on Tuesday, May 21st, to temporarily fill the District 5 City Commission seat until the criminal case involving Commissioner Hill is resolved. There are several city processes and procedures that need to be approved by council to facilitate the special election and we'll be holding a special city council meeting on Monday, April 8th to move those forward to allow those who wish to qualify to begin as candidates as quickly as possible. Um, commissioners, uh, our residents of our community have been and will be recognizing holidays during this time of year, including Ramadan and Easter and Passover. And I wish everyone a peaceful and joyous time. We're also celebrating spring this weekend with our spring fiesta in the park. Uh, returning to Lake Yola Park, it's free, it's family friendly. It's a great op opportunity to experience hundreds of works by artists and crafters. We anticipate good weather um, and some great offerings for our downtown. And this Sunday is 407 day. Um, today we support our local businesses and foster hometown pride. So post some of your pride to the uh, social media. And there's one item of note from the agenda that I want to mention. Um, our fp and r department is receiving a $1 million grant from the U.S. Forest Service, enhancing our city's tree canopy and covering the cost of tree maintenance and pruning in underserved, underserved neighborhoods ahead of storm season. And it also will fund a training program in partnership with our youth employment program to build the next generation of careers in urban forestry. With that, we will move on to the consent agenda, which is a number of items that are worked at the work that are voted upon um, through a single vote um, of council. We give each of our council members an opportunity to comment on the consent agenda items and update you on important happenings from their districts. Uh, today, we're going to begin with Commissioner Sheehan. Thank you, Mayor Dyer. And I would also like to congratulate Elizabeth Dang on her Mayor's Leadership Award. Um, she is the definition of grace under pressure, and uh, this is very, very well deserved. So kudos, Elizabeth. You do amazing work. And I don't think people understand how important the planning function is to the city of Orlando. If you, you know, I, I look over the, um, the skyline of the city of Orlando, I know that, you've imp that you have um, influenced a lot of that good growth, and I want to thank you for your commitment and very, very well deserved. And along with everybody in the planning department, you all do the omens work of the city and really appreciate all of you. Um, Mayor, I'm going to be brief. Um, on, the, on the agenda today, we have the historic preservation grant for Plaza Alive. They're doing wonderful things over at that amazing live venue. I was over there over the weekend. Uh, completely unexpected, uh, just delightful. It's called Postmodern Juice Jukebox. So if you get a chance to catch a show at Plaza Alive, they've got some wonderful entertainment happening there. And that's all I really have, Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Burns. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Good uh, afternoon, fellow commissioners and uh, our distinguished guests. Uh, on the agenda this morning, I wanted to acknowledge the uh, funding agreement with the Homeless Services Network to provide uh, uh, coordination of disaster preparedness and disaster response activities uh, in our homeless response system, uh, and also to provide technical assistance to uh, the service areas and uh, service providers of Orlando. So uh, thank you for, um, for that, and, and Lisa, thank you for all your work in that area as well. Also, uh, item D3, accepting the U.S. Uh, service Urban and Community Forestry Grant that will enable our Family Parks and Recreation Department to scale up their tree equity program that was initially started in Carver Shores and Richmond Heights. Uh, we will be able to expand it to additional communities. Uh, and so oftentimes we don't recognize trees as uh, important infrastructure, but as our cities continue to get hotter, uh, they do provide uh, shade and uh, cooling of those temperatures, but also can help with uh, managing storm water. So I'm excited to, uh, to see, see that. So thank you, Lisa Early. For uh, in your team for recognizing the importance of tree equity throughout our community. Uh, just a few things from my office on Saturday, March 16th, we hosted our annual bike and brunch uh, at District 6, 
and we had over 40 of our neighbors take a ride through District 6 and join a day of health and wellness. Uh, I would like to thank our transportation department, Bike Walk Central Florida, Lime E-Bikes, uh, for all participating uh, in this, in this uh, initiative. Also, we just uh, encourage everyone to stay tuned and for our next uh, Get Fit District 6 event. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you all next year for our next bike and brunch. Also on Saturday, uh, March 23rd, I attended the first uh, annual, I would, I would say, Unity Prayer Walk led by the Richmond Estates uh, Neighborhood Association. The prayer walk demonstrated our commitment to fostering unity and solidarity within our community. And it just gave us an opportunity to actually pray for the leadership of our communities, the residents, and the health and safety of our community. So special recognition to Ms. Alicia Gilreath and Ms. Dana Jones and participating churches and neighbors who are part of this event. Also on March 26, I had the pleasure of attending the, um, the meeting with Chief Eric Smith that he holds quarterly. This meeting really underscores our commitment to ensuring public safety and fostering positive relationships between law enforcement and our community. So thank you, Chief Smith, uh, and your team for, for all that you did. It was a great turnout, uh, and we look forward to, again, seeing, hosting you next quarter, Chief Smith. Uh, also, on Wednesday, the following day, March 27th, I hosted my biannual State of District 6 Town Hall meeting. Uh, it was held at the James R. Smith Center. And this town hall gives us the opportunity to engage our, our community, address concerns, and also discuss plans for the future. Uh, as the commissioner, it's my responsibility to, to facilitate constructive dialogue between our residents, city departments, and staff and stakeholders. Uh, this event provides a platform for residents to vo voice their opinions, ask questions, and receive updates. Uh, so I'd just like to thank uh, all the city departments that participated, Corey Knight and Public Works, Hannah uh, over at Streets and Stormwater and Solid Waste, Maria and Courtney from Transportation, George Warden from uh, Code Enforcement, Chief Smith, <laughs> Lisa, Abe, and Bobby from FPR, uh, and Ms. Shirley Walker who represented our RISE program uh, and the Chief Administrative Officers. Also to our vendors who came out and shared information, Orlando Housing Authority, uh, Mina Robinson with the HTG Group, which will be bringing affordable uh, senior housing to District 6, rebuilding together another great partner of uh, not just District 6, but the City of Orlando when we look at uh, improving our existing housing stock. Uh, also Orlando Fire Department, 311 Hotline, Supervisor of Elections, our MWBE staff and economic development. Uh, so again, your presence made our town hall a great success. So thank you for for supporting us in this event, uh, in this initiative. Also upcoming events, um, District 6 mobile satellite office hours will be Wednesday, April the 10th at the L. Claudia Allen Senior Center from 10 a.m. to 4. Uh, and in closing, I would like to uh, acknowledge a few, a few of our neighborhood association presidents who are, are with us this afternoon. First, uh, one of our newest presidents, Ms. Sandria Lark for the Lake Richmond Estates. Ms. Lark, can you wave your hand? Thank you for, for you can stand up, you can stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for, for being here. Also, Ms. Dion Turner from uh, Richmond Heights. Thank you, Dion. I think this is her second or third meeting. Uh, and then also Ms. Shirley Heath from the Great Carver Shores neighborhood. Thank you, Ms. Heath. And actually, uh, Carver Shores is our reigning uh, neighborhood association of the year. So, so thank you for everything you're doing. And that's all that I have, Mayor. Thank you. And I want to thank all of you ladies for serving as well. Having strong neighborhood associations are important to us. So thank you. Okay, Commissioner Gray. Thank you, and uh, congrats, ladies. You have the wave down perfect. I like that. That's just, uh, you got it. You're in next parade. We'll put you right in the Grand Marshal. Um, events in uh, District 1 are on my uh, website, so I just want to talk about a few things on the consent agenda. First, I uh, also want to give my uh, congrats to Elizabeth Dang for the Leadership Award. Elizabeth, unfortunately, has the pleasure of being on my speed dial because <laughs> I deal with Elizabeth probably more than anyone else of our professionals here at the city. But she does a fabulous job. We're very lucky to have her at the city. And Elizabeth, thanks for all you're doing. You, you do a great job. Glad to be on your team. So thanks for that and congrats. Um, also, uh, I wanted to reinforce what Commissioner uh, Sheehan said. B1 Plaza Live, I was fortunate enough to go to that ribbon cutting 
thing. Uh, and that team is doing a fabulous job, and I think that is a great gem for our city. So congrats to them, and, and uh, all the best as they, as they uh, re-energize that facility and, and provide um, their, their talents to our community. And finally, on B8, uh, the Budget Review Committee, hidden in there is another position for our OLA Hispanic Outreach Office. They do fabulous work for the city and our residents. And so I'm glad to see them getting some more resources and some more people. So uh, congrats to, to Anna Cruz and her team and Ola. So, Mayor, that's all I had on the consent agenda. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Ortiz. Thank you, Mayor. Let me start with the kudos also. Elizabeth, once again, I know everybody's thanking you, but you are a star. So thank you so much for what you do and for guiding us, because you do guide us a lot. So we really love the fact that you got this award, and we're very proud of you. Ms. Anna Cruz, congratulations on that same item Commissioner Gray was just mentioning. Uh, God knows that you deserve at least one, right? But maybe more, because <laughs> things are getting really busy in the city. So thank you so much for what you do. We're very proud of you and everything you're doing too, so thank you. So March 1st, 21st, I'm sorry, we hosted the Tri-County League of Cities for a symposium on homelessness. I want to thank Mayor Dyer for joining us, as well as uh, Commissioner Stewart, Commissioner uh, Burns, um, for joining us, uh, um, as well as those who helped organize and make the event a great success. Lisa Portelli, you can say enough about Lisa. Where's Lisa? Is she here today? Lisa, thank you. You're the best. Uh, what you're doing is impeccable, and you're helping our communities. I wish everybody knew about what you're doing, and uh, we hope to put it out there. Um, Anina Quarantello, Kathy DeVault, Angela Christ, and my staff all did a wonderful job, and thanks. Uh, Thank you to our speakers, Martha R., Central Florida Commission on Homelessness and Homeless Services Network President, Amanda Wander, Florida Housing Coalition, uh, Director of Ending Homelessness, and Cody Glazer, Florida Housing Coalition Chief Legal Policy Officer. Together with over 30 elected officials, we explored solutions for the unhoused in the Tri-County area. This experience was both humbling and inspiring. I'm grateful for the opportunity uh, to come together and pave the way for positive change in our communities and at the same time uh, continuing the legacy that Mayor Dyer has left with the uh, Commission Homelessness and Commissioner Stewart, everybody who has in, been involved. On March 27, I attended the of Officer Kevin Valencia's Memorial Highway unveiling where we pay tribute to the Orlando Police Officer Kevin Valencia. Every single day the men and women of OPD put their lives on the line to keep our city safe. I think it's extremely important that we keep honoring our fallen officers and those still standing who make a difference in our cities and keep it safe. And, and remember, while you're asleep, those are the guys watching the streets and your houses. So um, whenever you see one out there, please extend your hand, shake that hand. And if you have a cup of coffee ready, offer it to yourself. On March 28th, Chief Smith hosted a community meeting for the residents of District 2 at the Englewood Neighborhood Center. I want to thank Chief and the Orlando Police Department for your continued efforts in connecting with the community and building stronger relationships between OPD and our residents. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Ortiz. Commissioner Stewart. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, I'll be the last to congratulate Elizabeth. Thank you, Elizabeth, for your work. Uh, we appreciate it. And, and it's, you've uh, helped all of us gain a master's in land development, and we appreciate that. So thank you very much, and congratulations. Well deserved. Um, and uh, Commissioner Ortiz, let me thank you for your leadership with the Florida League of Cities again. Um, I don't know that uh, in the time that I've been involved and maybe the time you've been involved, we've had something um, so important, so impactful to our community, uh, specifically located uh, and, and directed towards our local officials with homelessness. Um, and uh, it was your idea, uh, you spurred it, and uh, I'm, I'm so grateful that you did that. So thank you very much. Um, Couple things, uh, Easter, uh, congratulations to all of our churches for having survived <laughs> Easter, uh, but it's been a wonderful Easter season and I got a chance to spend some time with my family and I know, Mary, you're excited about spending a chance with your new grandson. Uh, it was great. Um, speaking of that, we had plenty of Easter egg hunts throughout the community. Uh, I think I've hunted more eggs in my entire life than I ever have. We probably had 4,000 eggs at Rosemont, and we had 10,000 eggs at, at uh, Dartmouth, and we had another 2,000 eggs. And it, but to see the smiles on the faces of all the kids is wonderful, and to see the community come together really made it worthwhile. Uh, in Rosemont, we have a new teen room. Excited about that, just finished that up and, and announced that, opened it on Saturday. I appreciate the work that Gerald's done out there. 
Um, I had a chance to go to the uh, employee appreciation picnic we hosted over in District 3 at the Grove. Uh, that was a great event. It's wonderful to get the community, the, our employees together and staff together. Uh, they did a great, great job. So I appreciate the work that everyone did that went into that. And then, of course, uh, congratulations, uh, Anna, for your 20th anniversary of OLA. So congratulations, and we hope to recognize you more about that. So thank you very much. Uh, upcoming events real quickly. Tonight's the CPNA meeting over in College Park. Uh, Friday is uh, coming back this year is the Audubon Park bird call. It's a chance to get the community together over there. And then, of course, on uh, April 9th, uh, Chief Smith will be over at uh, College Park Community Center for his uh, quarterly meeting. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, on the agenda today, um, uh, congratulations on the forestry grant. What a great, uh, great asset to our community. Uh, and of course, Lisa, congratulations uh, on the work on HSN. Thank you for your work on that. I appreciate it. It means a great deal to all of us. Uh, so, and uh, that's all I have, Mayor. And with that, I'll move the consent agenda. Motion by Commissioner Stewart, second by Commissioner Sheehan. All in favor indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, and so the motion carries. Okay, without objection, I'm going to recess the city council meeting. I'm going to call the CRA meeting to order. I think I can handle the first two. So number one is meeting minutes from the CRA March 11th. Is motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Stewart. All in favor indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Item two is um, advisory board meeting minutes from February 28th. Motion by Commissioner Stewart, second by Commissioner Sheehan. All in favor indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Okay, David, do you want to take the rest of it? Number Can three. do. Thank you, and good afternoon, Mayor. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Item three is Amendment 1 to our contract with Universal Protection Services. You recall Universal Protection Services provides our ambassador services for downtown. This specific amendment uh, allows us to utilize an additional up to uh, just over 2,300 hours of service specifically for additional event ambassadors. We have a significant number of more events in downtown. We want to make sure uh, all those individuals who come downtown have a great experience, as well as um, some cleaning services to augment our clean team specifically at night uh, on Thursday evenings through Sunday evenings. The total uh, impact fi um, fiscally on this item is just shy of three hundred and forty thousand dollars at three thirty eight to seventeen thirty six and I'm happy to address any questions questions motion motion by Commissioner Sheehan second by Commissioner Stewart discussion hearing none all in favor indicate so by saying aye aye those opposed motion carries number four yes mayor thank you number four is a restaurant incentive agreement for blue wave sushi uh, Blue Wave Sushi is coming into downtown at 54 uh, West Church Street, former location of Amuro Sushi. Uh, they have signed a seven-year lease for just about 3,000 square feet of space there and spending about $400,000 uh, in build-out of that space. They have another location uh, in Tampa, so they are coming to, to downtown Orlando, uh, but they do have over 10 years of experience operating in the restaurant business. Um, the restaurant incentive uh, today offers them $100,050 of incentives from the CRA, 50,000 and 50 of that is for tenant improvements, uh, and the remaining 50 is for rent abatement. This specific uh, vote today would supersede a vote back on December 11th, which has been updated uh, due some co to some uh, contextual errors from their contractor. Second. Motion by Commissioner Stewart, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicates so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, and so the motion carries. Number five. Number five is another restaurant incentive, this one for Create Coffee. Uh, Create Coffee is coming into Creative Village. They're moving into the ground floor of the Modera building. That's on the east side of Luminary Green. Uh, they've signed a 10-year, uh, seven-month lease for space, or I'm sorry, a five-year, seven-month lease uh, for space there. And will be open Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, and again on weekends from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, they are spending about $450,000 in building out that space and uh, have received just about $240,000 of tenant improvements from their landlord. This specific award uh, would be for $125,000 from the CRA, $75,000 for tenant improvements, and the remaining fifty dollars uh, for first-year rental abatement. And I am happy to answer any questions. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Stewart. Discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, <coughs> motion carries. Any further business come forth, CRA, David? That is all, Mayor. Then we will stand adjourned and we will reconvene the City Council meeting and it takes us right to hearings ordinances on second reading, Madam Clerk. You ready? Yes, Mayor. Number one. Ordinance number 2024-12, ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, extending the temporary moratorium on the acceptance, processing, and consideration of development orders, development permits, building permits, and zoning approvals for nightclubs in the downtown Orlando community redevelopment area, providing legislative findings, severability, correction of scrivener's error, and an effective date. So. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Stewart. Madam Clerk, any cards? No speakers, Mayor. No speakers. Discussion here. None all in favor of the motion. Indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Number two. Ordinance number 2024-13, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, vacating, closing, and abandoning a portion of the Tacolas Avenue, generally located east of Interstate 4, south of West Cayley Street, and west of South Division Avenue, as described in the Maudlin International Trucking Center plat as recorded in Platte Book 95, page 28 of the Public Records of Orange County, Florida, and comprised of 0 0.33 acres of land, more or less, providing for conditions of abandonment, providing for the execution of affecting documents, severability, correction, scrivener's error, and an effective date. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Stewart. Madam Clerk? No speakers, Mayor. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, and so the motion carries. Number three. Ordinance number 2024-14, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, annexing to the corporate limits of the city, certain land generally located on the north and south sides of State Road 528 at the Innovation Way Sunbridge Inter Interchange and comprise of approximately 6,273 acres of land, providing findings, amendment of the city's boundary description, and for amendment of the city's official maps, providing for severability, correction of scrivener's error, and an effective date. Move to adopt. Second. Motion by Commissioner Gray, second by Commissioner Ortiz. I do have four requests to address council. Um, Mr. Andrew Mai with Orange County. I got that out so you didn't make the mistake on the Osceola <laughs> County part again. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, my name is Andrew Mai. I'm Assistant County Attorney for Orange County, Florida, 201 South Rosalind Avenue, Orlando, Florida. Orange County opposes adoption of this ordinance for the reasons set forth in the letter and supporting documents submitted into the record by John Weiss, PE, and Tanya Wilson, AICP, both experts in their fields. The county requests that you deny the ordinance or delay this ordinance until phase one and phase two of the annexation can take place together with an interlocal agreement between the county and the city which will address the many issues outlined in the letters submitted into the record. Based upon competent substantial evidence submitted to the record, you have the ability to, to deny this annexation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. John Weiss, Orange County. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, my name is John Weiss, Deputy County Administrator, Orange County Government. Uh, 201 South Rosalind Avenue, Orlando, Florida, 32801. On Wednesday, March 27th, 2024, the county submitted into the record its concerns and objections to the proposed Sunbridge Annexation Ordinance. I'm here this afternoon to briefly speak to key points raised in that letter. The county also submitted objections into the record at the March 11th public hearing. The county's objections remain on a broad range of key issues. As shared in those comments, the county spent more than a decade working with this landowner approved significant entitlements with specific considerations, entered into a series of complex developers agreements, and invested millions of dollars from the county's CIP and in infrastructure to support this development. This project could have been a great opportunity to work together to ensure the best uh, for existing and future residents of both Orange County and the city of Orlando. The county contends that this annexation does not meet the criteria of character of the area to be annexed as required in Florida statutes. The county contends this annexation, absent the phase two voluntary annexation being processed concurrently, splits the existing Sunbridge plan development with a portion of the project to remain, uh, to go into the city of Orlando with another portion to remain, at least for now, in unincorporated Orange County. 
The county contends this annexation leaves a significant transportation matters unresolved, including the jurisdictional transfer of roadways within the annexation area, reimbursement of prior county infrastructure investments, and full resolution of the developer's impact fee accounts pursuant to terms of our existing agreements. The county also contends that this annexation places at risk environmental protections in an environmentally sensitive area. The county remains committed to enforcing the provisions of the Environmental Land Stewardship Agreement and working with the city on the county's new wetland protection ordinance. The county therefore formally objects to this annexation for these reasons and those further detailed in our letter dated March 27th, 2024. Mayor, thank you. Thank you. And I will remind you that the city is inside the county still. Okay. Um, Christopher Mills, Orange County Public Schools. I think you had turned your card in late for the agenda review meeting, so we just put it here. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, Christopher Mills, 6501 uh, Magic Way. I, uh, I head up the facilities planning department for OCPS. Um, well, I did have comments on the, uh, on the item in the, uh, the consent agenda review. Uh, I mean, is it, it's far too late at this point. Well, we've already voted on it, but Correct. Just for, you got three minutes and it relates to it. So sure, I will right we'll use that time. Thank you very much. Um, uh, we re wanted to request that Section 9 of, of that agreement um, uh, be removed. Uh, that section, and I'm paraphrasing here, uh, says the developer will comply with current capacity and concurrency uh, regulations. Uh, the developer entered into an agreement that, that predates these current regulations, so um, uh, we feel that this section seems to, to kind of undermine our stance that the requirements of that agreement are still valid. Um, so in order to preserve our ability, OCPS, to pursue those requirements included in that agreement, we request that Section 9 be removed. That's what I would have said earlier. Okay. And we're aware of the dispute between the developer and the school district related to the, not necessarily to the concurrency agreement itself, but the amount to be paid uh -huh. pursuant to the concurrency agreement. We think at um, the state where we're bringing the PD forward and um, zoning, it will need to be resolved before that. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, and a surprise contestant, Zug, Doug Zabin, the uh, head of our fire union, new head of our fire union. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioners. Yeah, I guess it is a little unusual for the firefighters to be speaking on uh, annexation. But um, what this annexation brings to light is just some of the uh, vast capital needs that the fire department's going to need over the next five to ten years. Uh, already in the Lake Nona area, there's three stations to be slated. This annexation uh, will bring another two. We have station six that needs to be re relocated, station 13 that needs to be relocated. So you're, we're looking at seven to eight stations that, that we're going to need uh, to either come out of the ground uh, as new stations or replacement stations. Um, and that'll be probably in the neighborhood of $75 million. Um, the currently, I think we just built station 11 for somewhere in the 10 to 12 million range. So if we can continue to, in that price range, then, then we're looking at that kind of money for those stations. Uh, there's also the additional need of a training facility. I know the city is working on the land for that and we're thankful for that, but that's gonna be another, you know, we're probably looking total at, at close to $100 million in capital needs for the fire department before we purchase a truck, before we put firefighters um, on those trucks. And we would just like to, uh, the city has always, and the council has always supported this high quality of service that we give to our citizens, that our citizens deserve. And I know through this annexation that we will continue to do that. We'll continue with four-man engines and to staff our, our trucks appropriately. Um, right now, we don't have a, um, our strategic plan has expired and we don't have a, a growth plan for all of this annexation and for all of these stations. So um, kind of my ask a little bit is, um, we haven't had a new station built in, in 16 years. The last uh, truck that we put in service was Tower 15 in 2017. Um, that doesn't begin to tackle the, the challenges that we have downtown or out in the universal area with the increased density. I mean, in the time that the mayor's been here, the downtown has changed vastly and uh, the apparatus and, and manpower that we have available is, has been pretty uh, steady and hasn't necessarily adapted to all those changes. 
Um, but what we'd like to, to try to do is, is bring all the stakeholders together and, and work on and develop a long-term plan uh, for the fire department and for its capital needs. Uh, and I think if we can get all the stakeholders together, we'll end up with a, with a better vision and a better direction for the fire department. You can be sure that we intend to maintain our ISO 1 rating, yep. so that comes with all of that. And we appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. <laughs> yeah, it did to me too. Um, okay, discussion? Commissioner Gray, are you trying to ring in? No, sir. No. Okay. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, and so the motion carries. Okay, number four, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 2024-15, an ordinance of the City of Orlando, Florida, annexing to the corporate limits of the city portions of Butler Road, generally located from the easterly right-of-way line of South Orange Avenue and to the westerly right-of-way line of Oak Place, and comprised of 0 0.25 acres of land, more or less, and certain land generally located east of South Orange Avenue, west of Oak Place, and south of Butler Drive, and comprised of 0 0.17 acres of land, more or less, and amending the city's boundary description, amending the city's adopted growth management plan to designate the property as Urban Activity Center on the city's official future land use maps, designating the property as Urban Activity Center with the SOTA Special Plan Overlay District on the city's official zoning maps, providing for amendment of the city's official future land use and zoning maps, providing for severability, correction of scrivener's errors, permit disclaimer, and an effective date. Second. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Stewart. Oh, Madam Clerk, that was so much longer to annex 0.25 <laughs> acres than the one that was annexing 11,000 yep. acres. Okay, do we have any cards? No speakers, Mayor. No speakers. Discussion, hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion carries. Ordinances, first reading, number one. Ordinance number 2024-10, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, rezoning certain land generally located on the south side of Roberto Clemente Road, east of South Cimarron Boulevard and west of Pablo Lane, and comprised of approximately 1.4 acres of land from planned development with the aircraft noise in Cimarron Boulevard Special Plan Overlay Districts to the medium intensity mixed use corridor zoning district with the aircraft noise in Cimarron Boulevard Special Plan Overlay Districts providing for amendment of the city's official zoning maps, providing for severability, correction of scrivener's errors, permit disclaimer, and an effective date. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Ortiz, second by Commissioner Stewart. Madam Clerk. No speakers, Mayor. No speakers. Discussion, hearing none, all favor the motion. Indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Okay, number two. Ordinance number 2024-17, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, relating to maximum floor area ratio in historic preservation overlay districts, amending Chapter 58, Part 1B of the Land Development Code entitled Zoning Tables, providing for severability, codification of correction of Scrivener's errors, and an effective date. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by second. Commissioner Stewart. Um, Commissioner Sheehan. Thank you, Mayor. And I'd like to motion to approve the ordinance with a request that staff investigate a potential amendment to the method of calculating the floor area ratio within historic preservation districts, specifically the exclusion of inaccessible attic and basement spaces from the FAR calculation before second reading. It was just a concern that some folks doing some redevelopment in historic districts. So we will on. consider the motion that you made as that. For the second reading. Okay. The motion, your second for that? Or no, I'm good, considering the motion that she yeah. made, yep. including that motion okay. of that language. Okay. Uh, Mayor? Commissioner Stewart. Yeah, let me, um, uh, if, if, I, if I can, just for a moment, Commissioner Sheehan, if, uh, ask Elizabeth to come up for a minute and kind of explain a little bit about this calculation, because I know there's some confusion uh, in the community. I don't have any objection to what Commissioner Sheehan wants to do, but is that okay with you? Sure. Mayor to Elizabeth in lightness <laughs> as to attics and basements. <laughs> right. Good afternoon, Mayor and Commissioners. Elizabeth Dang with the City Planning Division. Um, there are some concerns, especially from people remodeling, about how basements and attics are calculated. And for new construction, it hardly ever comes up because that's just not part of 
what people build today, but if someone was doing an addition, I think there is reason they might be concerned. And we just need to talk with our legal folks about how to best word that and explain it so everybody knows how to do the calculation in the future. Well, unless we exclude it specifically, uh, a finished basement and a finished attic can be included as part of the floor area ratio, correct? As it, a it really space. depends if it's living space. Right, right, so right. when we're pulling numbers as a comparison from the property appraiser, we just use whatever they have. But when we're doing an actual review of a project, if there's living space, then we count it. But a lot of attics these days are all cross beams and stuff, and you, you really can't get in there. So. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. I appreciate it. I just, I, I, I agree with Commissioner She and I just, I get a lot of questions of you're changing it and you're changing the historic districts. This is terrible. I can't believe you guys are doing that. And my, I think it's really being done for the ease, ch trying to control this number for the ease of, of permitting, I believe. Isn't that correct? Essentially? Right. The idea, particularly in historic districts, is to look at the context of right. the surrounding right. homes and try to blend in so that new construction is a similar scale. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, so the motion carries, and so does the scheduled part of our agenda. Ed, if you could get us prepared for general appearance. <laughs> 